Next on the list, we've got this amazing, amazing news, courtesy of the great Twitter account called Over and Under. I recommend you check them out. Over and Under is one of my favorite Twitter accounts to follow because they post all the streetwear news, all the sneaker news I need every single day. The person that runs it is fucking on it. So big up Over and Under. So Over and Under have shared some very early images, some line sheet images. I actually missed this era. We used to have this a lot back in the day, but I think now with the prevalence of fake sneakers and the prevalence of like leakers online and social media, it's kind of changed things. But back in the day, when I used to collect shoes, the way that you'd find out about retro dropping was somebody sometimes posting pictures like this, which were like pictures taken on a phone of a of a of an illustration from a line sheet. And usually these were like sheets maybe given to stores and um, telling them what's coming up. Maybe it's stuff given to buyers in terms of what they're going to buy for the up and coming seasons and shit. But this is stuff that's usually like saved for in-house. So that's how you'd find out about shoes. But nowadays, because of the fake industry being so hot, people find out about shoes because, you know, they get fake quickly and they get take snap pictures of it and suddenly they're out there. But this is a really refreshing thing to see. So it's courtesy of Over and Under. It says, here's a preview rendering of a Cortez, right? The premier UK streetwear brand here in the UK. Fuck Palace and all that shit. Cortez are the one that kind of run the streets out here, right? They recently did a Supreme collaboration. Cortez are doing a collaboration with Nike, another one. The recent one with flipping um, Air Max 95s were, were cool. But I think these are actually perfect. And I actually think, because I actually said in the beginning, when that, when that MX-95 collab came out, I actually thought it didn't make much sense, especially based on the ages of the people that, you know, that make um, Cortez. Because he's quite, I would say he's young, but he's a quite a young dude. And him coming up, he would have probably had more affinity to the Hirachis or like an Air Max 90 or an Air Max, you know, um, 97 or even maybe an Air Max 89, 88. Um, maybe even the MX1 more so than an MX95. An MX95 was more so a my generation shoe. I feel like a lot of the trappers, a lot of the dealers back in the day used to wear MX95s, kind of like Versace shoes because they were so expensive back in the day. MXs were like hundreds of hundreds of pounds. Um, no, or in the high hundreds of pounds back then, even in like catalogs and shit, they were super expensive. But I feel like the kids coming up, they probably would have been more on the Hirachi trainer front or the Hirachi LE front so I was surprised when the first collab he did was an MX-95 but anyway maybe that was Nike pushing out 95 on him more but regardless I feel like this is way more in tune with London and the UK because there was a time in my life where the air, air trainer Hirachi was legitimately the most popular shoe out there and I had like five or so pairs crazy amount of pairs I had unfortunately the shoe is really annoying because it looks best when the strap is like hanging but if you wear the shoe long enough the the, the strap starts to like go everywhere so sometimes when I was wearing them the technique would be like to wrap the shoelace around the strap so the strap will stay down but then it would be a bit like crooked and stuff but I love the MX the Air Trainer Hirachi it's got this amazing like um clear mesh net looking um velcro strap on the forefoot it's got this nice neoprene sock on the inside similar to a Hirachi it's got more of a trainer substantial kind of thicker sole and it's a bit of a it kind of it kind of comes up above your ankle I think technically it's meant to be a cross trainer basketball type shoe but people wore them back in the day in London it was one of the most popular shoes when I was kind of coming up and you've got them featured here in an all black colorway with gum with a gum outsole which fucking looks great and it's got like a camo um neoprene sock lining the other colorway it featured is gray with a camo sock neoprene lining and a gum outsole type of bit going on there and then the last colorway is white with a gum sole and stuff so it's three colorways white gray and black um th the way they're doing those nike collaborations remind me a little bit of supreme when they do it like in collaborations it's always like these solid block colorways and it's usually like a black one a, a lighter color one a neutral and a bright one so i like that they're kind of following that sort of mold but i really like them i really fucking like them i know they're going to be a bit of marmite especially people out there that probably don't really have a history with the air trainer Hirachi, with it with the um nike air trainer hirachi or the trainer hirachi from back in the day but i absolutely love them big up wingers dingus Big up has <laughs> big up the chat. Bean cheese, bean yeah, cheese, bean yeah, cheese, bean yeah, cheese, bean yeah, cheese, yeah, bean yeah, cheese, yeah, Lopez, yeah, bean yeah, cheese, bean yeah, cheese, bean yeah, cheese, yeah, bean yeah, cheese, yeah, bean yeah, cheese, yeah, bean yeah, cheese. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get in. Get in my guy Wingus McDongus. Big up you. It's either Wingus McDongus, Wingus McDingus. Choose a name and stick with it, brother. Okay? Stop flipping scamming me up, man. Stop twisting me up, bro. But yeah, big old wingers. I appreciate you, brother. So yeah, the air trainers, I have a really big, long history with them. I'll show you some of my ones that I built back in the day. Back in the day, I had these, right? Some of my favorite, favorite, 
favorite favorite trainers that I remember having back in the day um, that I purchased with my own money from reselling shoes back in the day. That's how I would make money because we were so poor. Um, I didn't have the ability to ask my parents to buy me stuff. And because I have brothers also, I always felt guilty about asking my parents to buy me stuff anyway because, you know, we had other mouths to feed and a whole household to look after. So, you know, spending £130 on my fucking stupid shoes shouldn't be the priority for anybody. So I went out there and I started trapping. I started fucking selling, reselling shoes. I was reselling like, you know, shoes from JD Sports. I was kid you not. Um, people out there who know me from the forums from back in the day will know that I was reselling Nike Air Max 90s, laser blues. You know the laser blue? Nike Air Max 90 laser blues. There was a time, right, where for some reason, oh no, I think it's even still now, um, sneakerheads in Australia love Air Maxes, right? But they couldn't get a pair of Nike Air Maxes in laser blue, or maybe they were too expensive for them to buy in retail. So they would buy them from me and I would ship them to them in, in Australia. And I'll be shipping like five of these a week, maybe more. I was buying them from JD Sports and reselling back in the day. So I was making quite a bit of money doing this sort of stuff um, and kind of living life and having a good time and shit, right? Fucking absolutely loving it, right? So that was my life. Um, take care, Screw. Thanks for joining us, brother. Thank you for joining us and all the great insights you've had. Take care and enjoy your work day, my friend. Um, so yeah, so one of my ones that I obviously had uh, back in the day was this uh, special edition ones that I had as well. I think they're DR or Puerto Rico. I forgot the flag. I think it's DR um, for back in the day, the all white pair. Like I said to you before, they've got this amazing um strap on the outside and um, kind of meshy kind of plasticky kind of see through um which i always just used, used to like to wear loose without it being strapped so but the issue is once you started to wear them they didn't, they didn't really have a lot of like structure so they'd kind of like loop and bend over the other side so it'd be dragging and it'll kind of fuck up the whole shoe but i did like them i did like to have them there so sometimes i'd usually loop the lace around it to kind of make it stay or i, I knew some people who would cut a hole who'd cut a hole into the actual strap so that the laces will go into the strap so it could kind of stay in the position. But I feel like that strap is usually the best bit about them and they look amazing when you wear them. They feel really comfortable. That's the pair I had. I, did, I had this all-white pair. I also had this pair, which might be my favorite, the emerald colorway or the berry colorway, right? Where it's got this really amazing um, a bit, the plastic bit on the on the top is made in berry. You've got this nice white see-through bit and you've got the combination of the neoprene sock here with the green and the berry colorway as well. One of my favorite colorways I wore. Absolutely love this shoe. I wore them into the ground. I also had this pair that I wore to school kind of right which has got the black and white version i think they actually sold it in the Foot Locker back in the day so it's got black and white bits on it it's got some grays also on it on the back you got a bit of white on the midsole so i did usually get in trouble because sometimes in school they'd only let you wear the all black pairs not the pairs of like black with bits of white in them so that will sometimes get me in trouble but i did like to wear them i honestly 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 did like to wear them so i'm happy to see um Cortese collaborating with nike and doing these harachi trainers i feel like these are uk heritage when it comes to sneaker you know the sneaker scene and shit um or sneaker culture in general i think these are way more sneaker heritage and way and align way more with the brand and the age of the brand and the london the overall they may be the mx 95s as, as great as i like the mx 95s don't get me wrong i'd wear every single pair of the mx 95s i feel like these are more representative of you know cortese being the premier fucking uk representative when it comes to a brand i also love that how even though they're a uk brand they don't you know they don't scream about it from the rooftop they just make good clothes and i like that about them like so even though it's a uk brand they just make good clothes but obviously there's a there's a there's a there's an anchor that kind of ties us to the street culture here in the uk and i don't think you can escape them because there was a period in time where harachis were everywhere everyone was wearing harachis um the ellies the trainers like it was harachi season everywhere so it's great to see these being pushed um and i'm i, I can't wait to see actual official images of them because we've only got these kind of line sheets that are a bit blurry and a bit small and obviously they're like illustrations hard to kind of get a look at them but if i had to judge or I had to go for a pair that i would wear immediately if i had to pick one i think my favorite color would probably be the whites or the blacks the whites or the blacks for me they're they the, or maybe a uh, stretch probably the blacks the blacks probably the one will bang especially with that gum outsole that kind of gum outsole is gonna bang incredibly hard you got the gum outsole leaks to the back as well so i can't wait to see them when they eventually drop i can't wait to see them when they eventually drop so big up cortese big up blood clark cortese